I'm going to tell you how this story ends right now. You know, when I was growing up, there were all this uh, nuclear paranoia shit. All this, if the air raid warning came, what would you do if you only had three minutes left to live? If I only had three minutes left to live, I'd carry on exactly as I am. Because in three minutes' time, I'm going to be fucking in heaven. I'm going to be fucking the fittest chick in all white bastard world. So sort all that, will he get a warning, get a bullshit? I'm telling you now, this story ends with me pulling the perfect girl. I had nothing to do till a crucial business appointment at ten. So I flicked on Crime Watch and occupied myself giving detailed descriptions of people I hate to detectives working this harrowing multiple murder case. 9.30, I've got to give it in. I've supplied Her Majesty's thickest with 142 invaluable new leads. And they're getting a bit suspicious. My voice is uh, kind of familiar from somewhere. It's a real bastard. So many people you hate, but like old Nick says, only really a couple of multiple murderers on the go at any one time. So, I fuck off out the house, and I head down to Boar's Head, where a very different kind of crime is taking place. It's not a straightforward breaking of the law of the lands. It's not a crime against humanity. It's much worse than that. It's a crime against disco. Thursday night down at the Boar's Head is disco night. Every fucker knows that. Every fucker, it seems. Except for Brian, the bitch of a landlord, who's replaced the disco with... Cara fucking Orke. Cara fucking Orke. Run by this ginger-haired swat with big red plastic glasses and a big floppy red bow tie. I cannot, I will not allow my people to suffer like this. I take my place at the crowded bar and wait. Three songs in and the opportunity presents itself. After setting up some twat to rape and pillage a classic 60s ballad, the karaoke twat slips off to the toilet. I down me pint. The karaoke gimp is there at the left hand stall. He notices me coming in, flicks his head round to look at me. I head on towards the sinks, but then I stop for the slightest hint of a second right behind him. Well, I don't stop, I just pause for a tiny half a heartbeat right behind him where he can't see me. And the trickle of his piss against the porcelain comes to a stop as he clenches up in fear. I head on towards the sinks like I'm going to wash my hands. His gaze fixed dead ahead, but his whole attention is focused on me. He stands here, at once shitting him, sen, yet at the same time, cruelly unable to piss. I rinse my hands under taps. And that's when it all comes together for me. At front bar, I can hear chords from karaoke machine, and I just hum along to him. If you feel like a sing song, you should have a go, he says. I stop what I'm doing. I stop with rinsing my hands under taps. And I slowly, slowly turn round to look at him. Did you just say things to me? He stands there, grinning desperately. <laughs> I just meant he starts, but I'm on me run now and he's not going to stop me. Did you just say things to me? In the gents, for fuck's sake. I didn't mean anything by it, he says. Jesus fucking Christ, I say. What the fuck is the world coming to? Fucking gay lords trying it on in toilets at me own bastard local, for fuck's sake. I wasn't trying it on, he says. I'm not a gay lord. Well, you obviously fucking are, I tell him. He don't quite know how to come back to that one, so he just goes, I'm not. No, no. Right, I say. Well, in that case, how the fuck do you explain that? And I jab him 
in his great big floppy fucking bow tie, because that is about as gay as you can get. Oh, he says, with this great surge of relief. It's just me costume, see? I'm karaoke bloke. I do karaoke. Right, right. So tell me, karaoke bloke, what the fuck are you doing here then? You can see it then, in his eyes, just beginning to occur to him. There's more going on here than he thought. More and worse. Well, I'm doing karaoke, aren't I? Here, tonight. No, you're fucking not, I tell him. Well, I am. He goes, no, you fucking can't be, I say. Because tonight is Thursday night. And Thursday night, as every fucker knows, is disco night. Ma, disco night. The dawn breaks over the murky, lifeless continent that is his tiny bastard mind. You're the... You're the disco bloke. That's absolutely fucking lootly what I am, I tell him. Right, he says. And he takes off his big stupid glasses and he inspects them from up. Well, you see, it's not up to me, is it? I mean, and he shrugs at me like he's letting me in on some, some super fucking obvious fact of life, which I'm just too retarded to get a grip on. See, when you lose the crown, you're going to lose the gig, aren't you? He stands there. Polishing his glasses and shrugging at me with this look like, here we are, businessmen, having a business discussion. And it just so happens he's in the superior position. And what can I do about it? And what I do about it is, I let him get on with it. I let him pour it all out and I eat it all up. Eat it all up. I let all that shit come and settle in my belly. Now he's telling me I knows me and Craig have been doing Thursdays at the Boar's Head for years, and he's very sorry, but there's no room for sentimentality in show business, is there? <laughs> and I nod at him, nod at him, eating his shit all up, nodding at him, thinking, Oh, you poor fucker. You ain't got a clue, have you? You poor fucker. Because all this bad shit, it's going to have to come out. Because I'm not going to let that sit there in my belly. I'm not going to let all that melt into my guts and spread out all over me and be carried off and built up into my skin, my muscle, my bones. Oh no, that bad shit's going to have to come out of me and it's going to have to go into somebody else. And it looks like that someone else is going to be you. You poor fucker. He steps back, puts his glasses back on, straightens his jacket, even extends his hand towards me and says... No hard feelings then. I step towards him. I reach out like I'm reaching for his hand and I grab his head. I grab a handful of his hair and I slam his face down into the porcelain. So hard it bangs and bounces straight off. So fast his head's back to where it started before he even realises what's happened. <laughs> and the only evidence anything has happened is the sudden burning sensation in his forehead and the absence of his glasses which has fallen off his face and into the sink. What did you do that for? He goes scrambling around for his glasses. You are fucking with my disco, I tell him. Anyone who fucks with my disco dies. You wouldn't, he says. You wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? I say. There's a bloke, mate of mine. And right now, he's exploring the crumbling air road to this sinking little island, looking for a brand new place to call his home. And do you know why? The karaoke twat shakes his head, as he must. Because, I tell him, he knows that if he ever comes here again, I'm going to take his fucking face off! And he were a mate, he were like a brother to me. But he fucked with my disco. Karaoke twat steps back into the corner, blinking and making this little mewling noise. I go after him. 